Praise the Lord. It's a wonderful and a beautiful day to come and share the word. Because it's a, it's a grace of God. I wanted to add with that uh, testimony, the last testimony, mine too. <laughs> I'm 29 years old and I'm ready for marriage. And my mother has seen the girl. Mother has seen the girl. And I'm supposed to put a leave and go for marriage. I'm standing on the I'm British Airways when I just finished uh, supervising inside the aircraft and come. I saw the office boy standing down. Not office, my office boy, <laughs> general manager's office boy. I said, what do you want? He says, come. And he handed over one letter in my hand. And I opened and read that one. You are terminated. And it is on the heading they are given, immediate termination. Reach to your HR and hand over everything. And then I, op then I stood there and I prayed, Father, it's not my mistake. And I don't know what is the meaning of this. I give it to you. You take complete control. And give me the way where I should take the next step. Next step. And then he spoke to me within my heart, the unction of the Holy Spirit. He said, go to Middle East airline manager. Give it to him. And he will tell you, this is not your problem, it's my problem. What is that? My termination, his problem now. I said, yes, Lord. You have said it, I will do it. And I close the letter, go straight to the counter. I, he's, he's checking in the passenger morning, 7.30 in the morning. I gave it to him. Albert, this is a letter. Albert opened that one and said, he closed it and he said, Samson, this is not your problem, it's my problem. Anyone can hear the, such a word. And he says, don't worry, go home, in 15 days, things will change. Wow. And I'm sitting 15, 14 days at home, and the 15th day before that, he will call me, and he told me, your general manager, uh, on the 14th day, he called me morning, and he said, your general manager is going to call you tomorrow, and he will ask you one question. Why you didn't come to me when I'm the general manager? Why you went to Middle East Airline manager? I said, okay, fine. I will prepare that answer. But I prayed that day, fasted and prayed. Next day morning, I have to go and see the general manager. I said, Lord, I want an angel to go before me. Before I enter the office, the angel has to go into the office and I should get all my things done. That's my request. I reached to the general manager's office, and the general manager's secretary is saying, what, Samson, what is this? Why they did like this? I said, please don't ask me anything. All I wanted to see him and go. But Kuwaitavis manager was talking to him. So he says, just wait. Let the Kuwaitavis manager finish it. Let him come out. Then you can go in. I'm desperately waiting to give one answer for the question he's going to ask me and then go home, as if nothing has ever happened. Now, the Royal Jordanian airline manager came, and he saw me and said, Samson, you're sitting here? I said, no, nothing. We just come to see him say a few things and go back. He says, don't tell me. I know him who's sitting inside. You're sitting here means you are in trouble. And he told me one thing. Unless I come out, you don't step in. And told the secretary of the general manager, he said, unless I come out, don't send him inside. Even if he calls, don't send him inside. And he closed the door. And then I'm sitting outside for past 15 minutes. He's not coming out. I said, Khalid. Come outside, I have to finish mine, and I have to go back to work. 
And it's no more, not more than that, I have to go to my marriage now. You know, her father would have said, cancel. No marriage. No job, no marriage. You mean, you see that, where the knife is hanging? And the man who came out after 15 minutes closed the door and he told me, everything is settled. You will start your job tomorrow. I couldn't believe my own ears. And I went inside and he was smiling at me. Samson, you have any problem, you should have come to me. Why you didn't come to me? I said, sir, I saw you first day when you came for duty. This is the second day I'm seeing you. I need to build my gut to come and see you. That took 15 days for me. You remember? I need a gut to see you. And he laughed. <laughs> and he said, okay, never mind, forget it. Next time you have any, anything, come to me. Because the people who complain to me so much so, he has to go for that. He says, I had a plan for you, but then this has happened. But no problem. You go back to the same job, same position, everything. He reissued another letter. And then he asked me one question. Did you work for these 15 days? I said, you are the general manager, and your letter says immediate termination. How in the world I will work? And he asked me, what do you want me to do? I said, please deduct the salary of 15 days, because I didn't work. Yes, we can do it 15 days. I said, yes, sir, you can do it, because I didn't work. I am eligible to not to get the salary, because 15 days I didn't work. OK. So 15 days salary cut and you go back to normal? I said, yes. Why I'm saying this one? Your God is able to take you to that level. Hallelujah. Now I'm saying this one now. He has brought me on the 66th birthday. And he is faithful for all these years. I have, I have went through many things, many ways. But everywhere he picked it up, picked it up, picked it up. That's why I has not seen, ear has not heard what he has in store for you. Amen? Amen? Amen. Now we'll go to the message. <laughs> what do you see there? It's a big a pot. This one I got it from uh, because my daughter and my son-in-law is going to Korea for... Uh, Two weeks, there is a meeting they're going to attend, so they're going. But in that Korean embassy, I saw this book, and I was reading, and I was fascinated. Then I said, okay, let me bring that one as an initial one. The one who make this part, it looks very simple. Very simple, but that require 15 days to make one part. 15 days to make? One part. And he says, it required clay and a water and a fire, but the potter puts his heart and soul to make this. And then, on the process, he selects the real clay, makes it everything, and then he starts making it. Because it takes 15 days' time, he really works on that one to the detail. And then he makes it 10 to 20% bigger in size. Just to make it bigger in size, because the sun will reduce it. And the next picture, he has to put it in the fire. He makes, and when he put the first fire, the first fire stands for 10 to 20 hours. The pot has to be inside that for 20, 10 to 20 hours in 850 degrees centigrade to 900 centigrade. We would have become ashes. But that's the temperature it has to hold. 
and after that he applies a coating of coloring. After he gives the coloring according to the customer, he puts it back again there, and then this time it has to be in the fire for 24 hours. And the temperature is 1,200 to 1,300 degrees centigrade. Believe me, our God, he didn't send us to the first firing. He didn't send to the second firing. He stood that firing. He stood that firing. He took the whole thing and he said, you are free. That's our God. And he says, the number of jar he makes will make it only few for the market. And then he says, it is good work if I feel pleased with it upon removing it from the clean and find myself talking to it. Myself talking to it. What is talking? Oh, you are good one. Oh, you are handsome one. Believe me, the day we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he would have said the same thing. Oh, my handsome one. Oh, my perfect one. Because the maker is not going to make a mistake. The maker will not make a mistake. Every one of you has been chosen. He didn't break it and do it. He redone the whole thing. He redone the whole thing. That's what he says. Even if I make a mistake, I will redo again. He has redone in our life so many times. So many times that we are not missed. Yes, we missed. Did he fail? Yes, we failed. But yet, in his grace and mercy, he never let us down. That's why in 1 Peter 5.10 he says that may the God of all grace, God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen. That means he is still working in us. He wants to make it perfect. He wants to make us establish. And he wants to make us strengthen. That means after strengthening, he's not leaving you to settle you. Your God is an awesome God. Amen? Today we are going to see that awesome God wants us to do something in our life. What he wants to do? When we see in Matthew 5, 13 and 14, he says, you are the salt of the earth, and you are the light of the earth. Why he has given that perfection work has been done, and he is still working within us and moving with us, because you know, for salt, for what reason they are doing for salt? Seasoning, correct. And then, preservation. The salt has got two things. One is season, one is preservation. Everyone in life, we have ambition. We wanted to do something for the Lord. Yes? Something to the Lord. Some of them are really loyal. Some of them are compromised to the world. Some of them are totally forsaken and gone away. But the Lord is interested, the one who is loyal. Even the, comp I mean, uh, what do you call that one? Mm, the compromised one is trying to work on his life to come back, to restore. That's what he wants to do. You know, the church is not a hospital. Church is not a hospital, but it's a military outpost. Military outpost. We wear what? 
the armor we wear. Uh, we are ready and then we have to be. How many heard Chiku Korean? And a worship leader in Kerala, famous, too. So I have to say a few about things. Chiku Korean. He's a young boy. He's a worship leader. And the younger brother came and told him, I saw a dream. A black cat is biting you. And in the black cat is written, cancer. And the yellow brother said, come on, man. I'm already worshipping for 600, 700 people uh, in the church. I'm in the limelight. Don't tell me this. I said, brother, listen. No. The younger brother. Because within the house, anybody say, you will, 90% will ignore. <laughs> we became righteous. But then, speck of the day, he has been diagnosed by cancer. Diagnosed by cancer. And he went 38 something chemotherapy. Everything is done. And then going on, he came to the church. And then a few days later, he went back. And he had 40 cancer. The tumor was there in his body. 40. And he was struggling. You know what the church member went and told? The judgment started in the house of God. What could have went through for the parents? What could have went through that you are working in, your, in the, in the worship, worship team and you are singing out a heart out? What could have been in your heart went through? You know, you have to overcome that. The boy has overcome that. And then, never mind. Start serving the Lord. And every pastor will come and lay hands and pray. Lord, thank you. Take him. We don't want him to suffer more. You know, hand over and pray. And he says, I was so sad that everyone hand over and pray rather than heal and pray. You know? That's a tough thing to go. Why I bring that person in this middle is, we are the family. What we say, what we do, what we utter, we have to be careful. And one night he couldn't able to sleep that night, he was struggling, struggling. The Lord appeared and he said, you're healed. But the next day, he has to go for another youth con conference. He doesn't want to miss it. He never missed it. He never wanted to miss it. He went there, but no healing was there. No healing was not happened that night. The Lord has told him, you're healed. And he was wondering, he told me I am healed. Where is my healing? He come to the congregation, and then they started singing, the service is finished. Now, half of them went to eat. Half of them are here and there talking. And he couldn't able to take it anymore because his pain is so much. So he went back to the keyboard, started singing. First few songs went. Second, third, one hour has gone. The people here and there came back to the service. The service is finished, but they started service. He keep on singing. First hour was finished. Second hour finish, third hour, everybody who went here and there, everyone is inside the church. Third hour when he was singing, a girl, a little girl from the congregation came to the pulpit and pulled the pastor and said, give the mic to me. And he gave the mic to the little girl. She said, Chika Korean, now the Lord is healing you. Now the Lord is healing he was thrown out, thrown out, rolling, and to this end, to that end, rolling, 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 rolling. Then he, he fell down as he is flat dead. And the pastor who was knelt with him and started praying that he is already gone. 
And the same girl came back to him, pulled the pastor, and said, Pastor, don't pray that he has gone. He is alive. Pray that every restoration takes place now. Then he stopped praying for the other one, started praying, thank you, Lord, for restoring. When he got up, all the 40 disappeared. 40 cancerous cells is disappeared. I myself used to wonder why he didn't heal on the previous night when he saw him. But he wants to do in between his children and to show, I am your God. I am your God. So we have to be the salt of the earth. We have to be the salt of the earth. In Colossians 4, 6, what it says, Colossians 4, 6, let your speech always be graceful. Let your speech be always be graceful. Wounded people is not only outside, it's inside too. Our words has to be with, filled with grace. Seasoned with salt. That you may know how you ought to answer each one. This time it's not each one, reach one. How to speak to each one with full of grace. We are the children of God. He has called you into this for a purpose. We are the one who is supposed to carry on. We are the one supposed to go out, bring the people. Today he is standing and said, underline these two names. Our name has to be underlined because we have a vision and a mission. When we are praying, always be careful to use the if and a but. If, if you start with if, that's a negativity. That brings doubt. If you put a but, it is 100% negative. Even when you're praying to the Father, make sure where you put your if and a but. Because when we see in Luke, Luke 4, 3, we see, if you are son of God, if you are son of God, command these stones to become bread. He put a if there. If you are son of God. Why? He wants to bring a doubt in it. The seventh word he says, therefore, if you will worship before me and all be, will be yours. And the third one he says, ninth word, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. He has brought everything, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. When he comes to the lust, of the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, he said, if you are the son of God. Did the Lord confront him for the if? No, he gave the right word in his hand. This is it. I believe in it. I know it. But the 13th word is a reminder for us. The 13th word. Now, when the devil has ended Every temptation. He ended every temptation of Jesus. He departed from him until an opportune time. The devil and the hyena is similar. Devil and the hyena is similar. But you have to stand tall. If hyena will attack only when he see you below his eye level. That's why God put Aina to look down because the level is too low. Unless you fly, lie flat down, that eye level is below his high level. That's the devil is the same thing. He will continue following, continue following, continue following, continue following till you are flat down. Then he will attack you. That means you have no Strength at all. 
But in Africa, they teach you, if a hyena is coming out, your little boy cannot able to overcome that one. When you're running, he says, pick up a stick from the bush and hold it on your head. That means you are six feet tall. The hyena will look from far and follow you. But follow you. But you will reach your village without any problem. As long as you're holding your stick on your head. We have to stand tall. You have to face him. Resist him and he will flee from you. Resist him. How are you going to resist him? Stand tall. We must be alert. You are the salt of the earth. Be authentic. Be a real people. You must be a real deal that you have to go and you have to stand. You have to speak. You have to be a seasoning one. You have to be a flavoring one. Mark 4, 9, 49 and 50 says, I like this word. Everyone will be seasoned with fire. Everyone will be seasoned with fire. Because when I saw the pot and I said, what fire? You are seasoned with fire. And every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. So the holy fire will season you. And the word will flavor you. Jesus clearly expects the world to be transformed by our presence. Our presence will transform. Our lives cannot be a mixture of impurities. We have to be uncompromised. What we should be? Uncompromised. And pure and authentic. If you are pure, authentic, and compromised, you are in the race. You are in the race and you will see the breakthrough. Proverbs 4, I uh, took, and then 18 onwards till the last, it's so beautiful, but I cannot take the whole proverb, then it looked like a proverb class. 18th, what he says, just the, but the path of the just is like a shining sun. But the second part is something wonderful that shines even brighter unto the perfect day. That means when you go out, you extra shine the shining of the sun. Because the King of King and the Lord of Lord is with you. And he says on the 20th word, give attention to my word, incline to my saying, why? Your heart will become diligent and your spirit, out of your spirit, will issue of life will come on the 23rd word. 23rd word says, out of your heart, it will spring forth issues of life. That means you are not an ordinary person. When you walk in his light and when you walk in his way, out of your heart will spring forth issues of life. That the people will be restored. People will be strengthened. People will go forward. Are we ready for that? Are we ready? Are we want to be the salt of the earth? In life we have heard one thing. Oh, brother. I mean, not oh, brother. My friend, you say Christian? I see those guys. They're drunkard. They are cheaters. They are, I mean, he did everything, man. He was a spontaneous man. He's not a liar. He's a spontaneous liar. But I see you different. I see something totally different from my experience. We have to come to that level. A believer comes to that level. You, do, you don't swear. You don't cheat. You don't tell a lie. You come out of the way to help me. You are always there for me if I needed you. And you always pray for everything. That's a believer we call for. We change the atmosphere of that area because you are the salt. 
you bring the flavor into the place. We have to bring the flavor wherever we are, whatever we do. Why I say this one? You may be the only Bible they read. You may be the only Bible they read. Never allow impurity in your life. Stand firm, strong. He calls us to be conformed to the image of his son. He's called for what? To be? Speak to me. You are called to be? Confirm to the image of your, his son. That means when you're standing, you are the image of Jesus. When you're talking, you are the image of Jesus. When you're walking, you are the image of Jesus. That means your level of, level of your life totally changed. Wherever you step in, you flavor the place. Wherever you step in, you flavor the life. Wherever you step in, you bring flavor to the person without flavor. Isn't it? I brought this one with me. <laughs> what is this? It's not a man. The salt container, we keep it in the table. Salt container, we keep it on the table. If you needed it, you take it, put it, and keep it back. That means if you don't want anyone this and sitting on a table, it's useless. It's useless. Even if now I brought it empty, so <laughs> empty is also useless. Why I bring this one? Unless the salt come in contact with another element, it doesn't give flavor. If you keep it here, sitting here, it will sit there forever. We have to move. We have to season others. We have to touch others' life that they must bring flavor into it. Today is the day to dedicate for that, that I will be the salt of the earth. You have to dedicate yourself or rededicate yourself. You are already a believer. You have to rededicate your life. I will be the salt of the earth that you have called me, that you, I am the image, I have the image of Jesus in me. If I stand, Jesus is with me. The Spirit of the Lord is teaching me. Ask him what to do next, he will tell you. What word to say, he will teach you. He will bring you into remembrance the things which you ought to say. The second portion we will go for, you are the light of the world. Second portion is, you are the light of the world. There are all kinds of theories are there in the world, and there are so many motivations is there, everything is there. But one thing is very famous. What the devil does? He will give you guilt, fear, and shame. That's what the world will give. That's what the devil will instigate. But as a believer, what the Lord has given you. What has the Lord has given you? Jesus motivates through positive message of hope and encouragement. How many times he said, fear not? Every step he said, fear not, I am with you. Fear not, I am with you. Fear not, I am with you. Why? Because the world may try to intimidate you, but he says, fear not, I am with you. In Philippines 2.15, if we see, what we see? We are living in the midst of the crooked and perverse generation. Even in Jesus, when he got angry, he said the same thing. Crooked and perverse generation looking for a sign. You will not get any other sign but Jonah. He said it. The same continues till today. There is a 
crooked and perverse generation we are inside. But what he asking us to do, according to this word, he wants you to be blameless, he wants you to be harmless, and he wants you to be fault, without fault. Blameless, harmless, without fault. That means you have three categories. What does this stand for? Blameless character. Your character stands for it. And then you come for harmless, that means your gentleness. Fault means we have to control our faults. When we walk in that status, then in this generation, you will pick people and bring them into the joy of salvation. Light is there to guide, light is there to disperse every darkness away. That's the reason he says, you are the light of the world. You have to go there and disperse the darkness away from your brother's life, away from your sister's life, that you should rise up to a level that everywhere you go, you are a blessing. Everywhere you go, you are a blessing. John 19 to 21, it says like that, light is used to penetrate darkness and expose evil, right? Light has come into the world, but men loved darkness. Even today we know people love darkness. And the games which they have given now, my gosh, now recently we saw that one boy is asked his mother, if I die, it's okay for you? Because he was playing a game. And he died. The one who murdered the father and the mother and burnt the auntie because of the wild game they play for. Mother Teresa gathered the whole, the whole big congregation, all the orders got come together, and Mother Teresa was there. And the lady asked, Mother Teresa, every order we are losing members, how come you, so many joining your, your order, what is the reason behind it? You know what she said? I give them Jesus. I give them Jesus. She said, I know, Mother, but you know the wearing habits and this and that, and then your rules and regulations, how you maintain it. She said, I give them Jesus. And she got really thinking, why she keep on saying, I give Jesus, I give Jesus. And then she asked, can you be more specific what you do? She wants more than Jesus, she wants something specific. And she said, I give them Jesus. And then he says, Mother, I know. But I want to know about something else. And she said, Child, listen, this is the last time. I give them Jesus and nothing else. If we take the same lady stand, and we start giving Jesus nothing else. Giving Jesus nothing else. Giving Jesus nothing else. Give Jesus nothing else. If that is our focus, we will be another Mother Teresa. Why I brought that one? Because Jesus has touched our lives, given the power and authority to all he was asking us to be a child of God, to do it. Even now, if you miss it, there is an antidote is already given. What is the antidote? Go back to 2 Chronicles 7, 14. 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my People, he didn't start any other way. If my people who are called by the name humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Did he add anything extra qualification in that one? You should have a certificate and you should have this, you should have that. But everything within the reach. And turn from the wicked ways, then 
I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Heal their land means your prosperity, your victory, your safety, your security, your providence, your provision, everything comes in one, one go. Matthew 5.3 is my favorite. What is this? Poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. That means you became meek in your spirit. When you are meek in the spirit, you go to the Father. Humble yourself and then say, and then stand there. He will open the door for you. When you open the door, you're going to ask him. When you ask, he's going to give it to you. Be meekness. Be a salt. Be a light in this world. Now, Esther, where is she? Okay, she's there. Please come. She's going to conclude that, conclude this message. There is a candle in every soul. Some brightly burning, some dark and cold. Holy Spirit, who brings a fire, ignites a candle and makes his throne. Carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the helpless, confused and torn, and hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. Our frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she has been robbed and lied. She still holds a candle without a flame. So carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the lonely, tired and worn. Hold out your candle for all to see. Take your candle and go light the world. We are the GMI family whose hearts are blazing. So let's raise our candles and light up the sky praying to our Father in Jesus' name. Make us a beacon in the name of, make us a beacon in the darkest times. Carry your candle, run to the darkness. Seek out the helpless, deceived and poor. Hold out your candle for all to see. Take your candle and go light your world. Amen. Hold out your candle. You are the light of the world. As you walk, the light will shine. The darkness will go away. Because I want the youth to say that one. That's why I didn't come to that one. Okay. Thank you. Jesus, you. 